<sighs> How are we doing so far? <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everybody. The 21st day of November 2018. This is Wake Up on AHU Valley. I'm Dan Koontz, your host. Cat is in control, but I mean just barely. Just barely. We're here. We're going to do a show. No five-star show for you today. Not even a three-star show. We're just going to get you to 8 o'clock. And then we're going to start preparing to visit family and friends for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday. That reminds me, a quick programming reminder. No show tomorrow. No news tomorrow. Everybody's going to be taking tomorrow off as well they should. It's Thanksgiving after all. And then we'll be back on Friday, but probably not in the best of shape. Just, you know, I want to be honest with you here. Uh, first of all, I won't be here on Friday. Eric Grandstrom, uh, my good friend, is going to be filling in for me on Friday's edition of Wake Up in Anchi Valley. My family's in town, and I don't want to work Friday, so I'm not going to work on Friday. Eric will be here on Friday. We'll have news on Friday. Well, we're, we're back to work. Uh, just not me. Ta-da. Uh, what do we got going for you today? We got the, the all-important Thanksgiving weather forecast. We got the Thanksgiving pass report. We got, uh, we'll give you another update on the do's and the don'ts and when to travel over I-90 and when not to travel over I-90. Weather forecasts are back and way off in this snow thing now. We might get a little bit of light snow early Friday morning, and that's it. So forecast is coming up. Also, we have uh, your, um, uh, let's see, we'll do news, we'll do sports, we'll do today in history, we'll do birthdays, we'll do the obscure holiday, we'll do everybody's entitled to Mike Minardi's opinion. And because the Apple Cup, get it, Apple Cup, Apple Cup, you get that? Uh, because there's a big football game on Friday, during the second half of the show, we'll be talking baseball. We're gonna replay our interview with Jose Oglesby and Joel Norman from the Wenatchee Apple Sox. That's coming up in the back half of the hour. All right, well, apparently we're still on the air with 58 minutes to go, so let's go ahead and take you around the valley with our Valley View cameras, and we'll start out, of course, with the cross camera pulled back, tilted up, and looking good. You notice we now have clouds. We still have that air stagnation advisory, by the way. That remains in effect until 1 o'clock today, and then it should be going away because we have a couple of um, upper-level upper disturbances that are going to slide in. Uh, not a particularly dramatic change in the weather, just kind of a little bit here and there, uh, but it's going to be enough to scour out the skies. So the air stagnation advisory should expire, it's scheduled to at 1 o'clock this afternoon. However, that stage 1 burn ban is still in effect. That's issued by the Department of Ecology. That's been out since uh, Saturday, and it's still in effect. In some counties, they have go ahead and, and let that one go by the wayside, but not for our area. We still have that stage 1 burn ban. In effect, that means uncertified wood, wood stoves, fireplaces, inserts. If it's uncertified and it burns wood, you can't do it. All outdoor burning, of course, is prohibited. If you have a clean burning certified wood stove, pellet stove, anything like that, you're fine. Uh, the only time you can do an uncertified wood stove is if it's your, your only source of heat in your house, and that's cool too. We'll, we'll let you go with that. All right, good morning, Wenatchee Valley. Let's take a look at camera number two. Cat says, let's go see Apple Annie's, and we're doing just that, the lovely hamlet of Kashmir, dominating this, the uh, scene there. Mount Kashmir right there, Mount Stewart in the background. Beautiful view there. You can see the highway, the Wenatchee River. That, we call that the Apple Annie's camera because that's on that, uh, that bench way up above Apple Annie's as you get into the early American village of Kashmir, which is what they used to call themselves, and they don't do that anymore. Why? I don't know. Camera number three. Uh, we say good morning to the Tumwater Canyon camera. That is Leavenworth. Good morning, Leavenworth. By the way, Leavenworth, big festivals coming up here in uh, December, I'm told. They're going to be lighting up some uh, the town and doing all kinds of stuff. I understand it's a pretty big deal. Good morning, Leavenworth. Good to have you on board as we look to the east towards the Wenatchee Valley from our camera high atop the entrance to the Tumwater Canyon. And finally, camera number four is Billy Goat. Good view of Billy Goat there to the Alta Lake Golf Course. At the bottom of your screen, we you can see where the Met Howe empties into the Columbia River. You can see Pateras. Can't quite make out Brewster, though. And, of course, you can't make out Bridgeport at all. It's on the other side of that ridge. They have a few low clouds there. Everybody's going to be dealing with clouds today and a little bit of light rain. Uh, that nice sunny weather that we've had over the last couple of days is about ready to go away from the National Weather Service. Let's take a look at your forecast. And there it is. Uh, again, we still have the air stagnation advisory. It's supposed to expire at 1 o'clock today. Uh, we still have that stage 1 burn ban in effect. We don't have an expiration on that. Today begins the change. It's been <clears throat> benign, I guess is the best way to put the weather. Uh, but things are going to change now. Most of the precipitation that is in the forecast that you see all the way through Sunday and Monday with Saturday being the exception, it's all going to be rain, 
Could get some freezing rain, by the way, on the Waterville Plateau. I, wa I wanted to mention that. Outside of that, uh, as far as snow is concerned, yeah, not going to happen. Maybe early, early Friday morning outside of that. For today, cloudy, slight chance of light rain in the afternoon, high of about 39 degrees, 40% chance of light rain tonight, 32 for the overnight low. Thanksgiving Day, a 50% chance of rain, lots of clouds, high of about 42. Whatever rain we get will be on Thanksgiving morning uh, for Thanksgiving night. We're looking again at a continuing chance of light rain, overnight low of about 32. Friday, Black Friday, again, slight chance of light snow before 8 o'clock, and then we're going to get some rain. It looks like a pretty good chance of measurable rain on Friday, spilling into Friday night. Saturday, we have a little break in the weather, lots of sunshine, half about 41, and then Sunday back to the clouds. And if you're heading over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house on Sunday night, and you're done with the holidays, a slight chance of some light snow in the Wenatchee Valley. Again, a couple of days ago, they were thinking we had a pretty good chance of maybe some, some snow that wouldn't be sticking around, but at least to be coming down. Now they're saying that's probably not going to happen. Let's take you up to the mountain passes at six minutes after the hour on a busy travel day. No advisories, no restrictions across the board on any of the major mountain passes. The snow level is going to be at about 4,000 feet from today all the way through Sunday, which means Stevens is going to get the snow. Blew it a little bit of snow. I-90, probably none at all. Uh, a couple of inches of snow possible on uh, Stevens Pass today. There's a live shot of Blewett, by the way. Again, right now, no advisories, no restrictions. A couple of inches of snow today on Blewett, a couple of inches of snow tonight. I mean, I'm sorry, on Stevens. A couple of inches of snow tonight on Stevens. A couple of inches uh, today, tonight. A couple of inches on Thanksgiving. A couple of inches uh, Thanksgiving Day. Now, Thanksgiving night, uh, that's going to be the most amount of snow that they're expecting on Stevens Pass. Live shot of Stevens there. Four to eight inches of snow possible Thursday night. Another four to eight inches of snow possible Friday. And a couple of inches on Friday night. Again, Stevens is going to get the brunt of the snow. It doesn't look like I-90 is going to get a, a great deal of snow if they get any at all, and the same deal with Blewett. Now, as far as travel is concerned, we want to bring this slide up. This is the same slide we showed you yesterday. It's just a heads up on, on uh, what you're going to be dealing with. Uh, this is eastbound from North Bend to Clay Elm uh, for today. And though that red area that you see there, that's the peak travel times. The, the black bar is normal, average uh, traffic. Uh, if it wasn't Thanksgiving weekend, but it is Thanksgiving weekend, and so you see that the red area there, that's when traffic is going to be really congested on I-90 from North Bend to Clay Elm. That is today. Now, you go to Sunday when people are heading back the other direction from the eastern Washington back over to the Puget Sound area, and those are the times you want to avoid heading over uh, the passes, especially. This is all I-90. Stevens Pass, they're not expecting a great deal of delays, just I-90. Uh, that's that's what we're looking at. And of course, it's also Apple Cup weekend. And a friendly reminder on Apple Cup uh, today or on Friday, if you're heading over to to Pullman, uh, there is a slight detour on Highway 26 in the Othello area. So you want to plan on another 15 or so minutes of travel time there. They're going to take you off Highway 26 and then back on again through Othello. They're doing some construction work there. And of course, also Highway 26 will be heavily traveled on Friday for the Apple Cup, which kicks off at 5:30 on Friday night. Eight minutes after the hour, we're going to take a break. When we come back, your news. You're watching Wake Up Anche Valley on the NCLB Live channel. Rosemary, I've been at this job for a whole week and I haven't got a promotion yet. You should have someone around to help you think things through. Well, maybe I should. I'm always available. Oh, you're sure? Great. I hope I can show my appreciation. Lunch! Huh? I said lunch. What about lunch? I'd love to. Love to what? You said what about lunch. Gee, I thought you'd never ask. I didn't mean what about lunch. I meant what about lunch. Or dinner and a show. What show? Wenatchee High School's How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Buy, Buy your, your tickets, tickets today. today. I came here to CVCH because um, one of my friends referred me. When I met Dr. Jocelyn, she was just amazing. She connected with my son and it meant so much to me. He opens up so quickly because she just sits there and plays with him. It really is like going to see a friend. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed and you feel accepted and respected. It just feels like home. Twenty-eight degrees outside of our studios. Pretty fair skies right now, but the clouds are going to be thickening up. A little bit of light rain possible beginning today and really lasting all through the weekend, with the exception of Saturday. I'm Dan Coons, so let's take a look 
at your Wednesday morning headlines. We have more information on the house fire that we reported on yesterday morning, a home in the Malaga area destroyed by fire at around 5 o'clock yesterday morning. Rick Isaacson is the public information officer for Chelan County Fire District 1. He said the cause of the fire at 3785 Baynard Road under investigation. Nobody was home at the time of the blaze. No vehicles at the scene. Uh, there was supposedly, according to a neighbor or a reporting party, there was a couple with two small children to live there, but um, a search of the residence, uh, extensive search of the residence, found uh, no sign of anyone in the building at all, so that was good. Uh, extensive damage to the single wide. Uh, they had to pull the skirting off of it to get underneath it to get some of the fire out. Um, quite a bit of damage. Just, I don't think it's livable. Rivercom Operations Manager Misty Vbrock has been promoted to Executive Director of the Regional 911 Service. Jim Fossey retiring from the position at the end of the year after a nationwide search. The Rivercom Board interviewed four finalists for the job and then selected Vbrock. She has worked in public safety communications for the last 20 years, beginning with the Wenatchee Police Department. She's been Rivercom's Operations Manager since 2013. Congratulations to her. A little more than a year after celebrating the completion of the first Gigawatt Gigapod at Pangbor Memorial Airport, Gigawatt Incorporated has filed for bankruptcy. The Chapter 11 filing in federal bankruptcy court lists almost $70 million owed to creditors with minimal company assets. Gigawatt had planned 17 such pods to provide space to cryptocurrency miners, but troubles have plagued the company almost from the very beginning, including numerous lawsuits from investors and construction liens from contractors. That has been accompanied by a plunge in Bitcoin prices this year. Listed among the creditors, Douglas County PUD, which is owed more than $310,000, according to the bankruptcy filing. Well, every winter, the Department of Transportation closes State Route 20, the North Cascades Highway, due to avalanche risk. But the area remains open to skiers, snowmobilers, and snowshoers to enjoy seasonal adventures at their own risk. But this winter, the DOT announced in an attempt to conserve budget funds, they're going to close four more miles of the highway, which means four more miles for winter activities. When the DOT closes the highway this winter, typically when heavy snowfall begins and avalanche danger increases after Thanksgiving, the closure point will still be near the Ross Dam Trail. But in January, maintenance crews will move the western closure point back to the western side of Diablo Lakes Thunder Arm near the Thunder Knob Trailhead and Colonial Creek, Creek Campground. That's near milepost 130. According to the DOT, crews will still have and still host the annual spring opening day celebration. That's where front clouds have lined up for decades to go over the pass when they reopen in spring. And finally, on this uh, Wednesday morning, uh, Link Transit announcing yesterday that Ski Link service to Mission Ridge will begin on Friday, November 23rd, with the beginning of operations of the Mission Ridge Ski and Snowboard Resort. There will be uh, seven round trips each day to Mission Ridge. The first trip up will depart from Old Station. Old Station is 6.45 in the morning. The remaining trips will leave from Columbia Station. Departures from Columbia Station, 7.05, 8.25, 9.45, 11.45, 1.05, 2.25, 2.25, and 3.45. Lincoln Park, of course, has been a, a place uh, that they stopped for years. Uh, that's about five minutes, by the way, after the Columbia Station departure times for those people who like to park their car and use the Lincoln Park shuttle. And on the last trip of the day, we'll return to Old Station at about 5.20 in the afternoon. Of course, all skiers and snowboarders can ride Ski Link for free. Just be sure to have your pass ready to go. And Well, you're going to look like a skier or a snowboarder anyway, aren't you? It is 14 minutes after the hour. Friendly reminder, our Les Schwab Community Toy Drive is back again this year, second big year in a row. Last year we served about 700 kids in the Wenatchee area. This year we're hoping to bump that up to about 1,000, but we need your help. First of all, big live broadcast is going to come up on Friday. We're going to be there in conjunction with our friends at Country 1047 KKRV. They're going to be broadcasting live on the radio from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock at Hooked on Toys. Our very own Eric Grandstrom will be there live from 10 to 10.30, commercial free, again, at Hooked on Toys, again, on Black Friday. Anytime during the holiday season, you can drop off a new unwrapped toy 
at any of our sponsor locations, and that includes both Les Schwab locations in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee, obviously Hooked on Toys, great place to do it. Go there, get your unwrapped toy, and just drop it off right there at the bin. Uh, Cash and Valley Bank locations in both Wenatchee and East Wenatchee. Sangster Motors, Country 1047, KKRV, both works locations on either side of the river. Kubota Valley Tractor and Rentals, Highlander Golf Course, Columbia Valley Community Health, Element Spa and Salon, and the Walkabout Grill. If you go to uh, the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive Facebook page, everything you need to know will be right there. And don't forget our live remote. Friday morning, Black Friday from 10 to 10.30 from the parking lot of Hooked on Toys. 15 minutes after the hour, we're going to take a quick break. Oh, one more thing before I forget. The news with Grant Olson. The news with Grant Olson. Plus, Eric Grandstrom with sports will come your way uh, tonight at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock to get your Thanksgiving holiday underway. Fill your head full of the information that you need for the holiday. 5, 6, and 10. It's also uh, available on our website on demand. Uh, just go to ncwlife.com. You can watch not only tonight's newscast at about 5 o'clock if you want to go back and look at previous newscasts. So you can do that as well. And you can also go to our Facebook page if you so desire. Going to take a break. When we come back, sports. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley live this morning from Studio 9 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCW Life channel. It's a hometown celebration. Christmas in Kashmir, Saturday, December 1st from noon to 3. It's family fun with a kids craft station, festive music, complimentary warm beverages, and tasty holiday treats. Come enjoy the sights and sounds of the season while awaiting the arrival of Santa Claus. This message brought to you in part by... Discover Epladolin Assisted Living. Affordable care in a home-like atmosphere with no long-term contracts. Enjoy a healthy meal on the deck at Leavenworth. Walkabout Grill. Hi, I'm Eric Grandstrom with the NCW Live Channel. And I'm Brent Rhodes with Country 1047 KKRV. The Les Schwab Community Toy Drive is back. Join us for a very special kickoff event Friday at Hooked on Toys. We'll be there collecting new unwrapped toys from 9 to 4. The Country 1047 is broadcasting live from 10 to 1. And NCW Live Channel broadcasts live 10 to 10.30. Help us make sure no child goes without a toy this holiday season. Join us for the Les Schwab Community Toy Drive kickoff Friday at Hooked on Toys. With Country 1047 KKRV. And the NCW Live Channel, your local local TV station. Back out of here on this Wednesday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley, 17 minutes after the hour. I'm Dan Koontz. Let's do sports and we'll start out with a peek at the Les Schwab Prep Scoreboard High School Bowling yesterday. The Panthers from Wenatchee High School racked up 2,044 total pins, won by 534 pins over the Moses Lake Chiefs with games of 858, 864. And the Bakers of 162 and 160, the team swept the four-game set. Top scorers went to senior Emily Groth, senior Jessica Holbrook, and sophomore Kyla Hankins. The Panthers take on Cross River Rival. Ri blah, blah, blah. They take on Eastmont today at 1 o'clock at Eastmont Lanes. It is Wenatchee's first home contest. The NCAA Live Channel will be there, of course. We'll uh, broadcast the event on a tape delay uh, broadcast with Eric Grandstrom and Paul Pava calling the action. Looking forward to that. Les Schwab College Basketball Scoreboard at the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. Rui Hachimura scored 24 points. Zach Norville Jr. added 20. Gonzaga beat Arizona 91-74 in the semifinals. That means a date with number one Duke today, 2 o'clock on the Entertainment and Sports Programming Network. The Blue Devils advance to the title game by beating Auburn 78-72. to Oh, let me tell you about the college football. It's Washington and Washington State. The 111th Apple Cup Friday night in Pullman. Husky coach Chris Peterson says he's impressed with what Washington State is doing offensively behind Gardner Minshew. I think on offense, um, I think their O-line is uh, obviously pass protected as well as anybody around. They don't throw the ball that much and give up that few sacks. I mean, right there you can look at that and it says a lot. That coupled with Minshew in terms of his pocket poise presence, I mean, he's got a great feel. You, you're, you're coming after him, ball's out. You're not coming after him, he's going to stand in there. You get to him, he's going to get out of the pocket. Really decisive. The combination of those two things is really what's kind of made it maybe a little bit different. Current coach Mike Leach says the Huskies have a ton of athletes. That means, of course, that they weigh over 2,000 pounds. And also that Wazoo just needs to focus on itself. What stands out, they're like they are every year. You know, they're big and physical, so... They got some key players on offense and like to shift in motion to try to get you off balance. You know, I'm not uh, terribly focused on that. I'm pretty much focused on how we can get better uh, 
you know, this week and today in particular because we're going to practice here in a couple hours. And so, uh, you know, I'm pretty much focused on, um, you know, what we can do this week and just being the best team we can be. And, uh, and uh, to be honest with you, hustling out of here and uh, uh, finishing the game plan. So. The last time these two coaches saw each other was at a Pac-12 coaches meet meeting, and Peterson said it was memorable, as always. I didn't, the last time I saw him, um, I, I didn't really get a great chance to talk to him because he was a half hour late to our head coaches meeting, and we were all looking at our watches going, hmm, this might not turn out good for him, and sure, he walks in with his In-N-Out burger and milkshake, and we're all like, really? waiting for somebody to say something, and he's just happy to clam eating away, and we're like, why didn't we do that? <laughs> and then he said, well, we have a meeting, and I hadn't eaten anything all day, and, you know, if I didn't get something to eat, I wasn't going to be any fun to anybody, and um, so I figured that it was in my best interest and the other people that I'd be around and associate with uh, that I got something to eat, and... It wasn't entirely unlike uh, Jeff Spicoli in Fast Times on Ridgemont High <clears throat> when he walked in with the pizza, and you know, and they said, "This is our," t uh, or "This is," uh, you know, Mr. Hand says, uh, "What do you think you're doing on my time?" Well, everybody was there, so I felt like it was our time, and um, so we might as well enjoy some In-N-Out burgers as long as we we're all there and. Uh, getting the edification of the meeting, and then I was hoping to eat it before I got there, but then uh, <clears throat> turned out the way it did, so I figured uh, uh, no time like the present. This is going to be the eighth time, by the way, at the Apple Cup matches. Two teams that are actually ranked in the top 25, the number seven Washington State Cougars, their highest ranking ever while they're meeting the Huskies. Kickoff Martin Stadium Friday in Pullman. At 5.30, by the way, televised on Fox. Seahawks coach Pete Carroll, he's also pretty much revved up for the Apple Cup. Hey, big college game this weekend, huh? Big college game. Bruins and Trojans. Yeah. That's a big matchup. Last week, you know, it was a big deal. But this week, Notre Dame and, and the Trojans, that's pretty big now. I know. Apple Cup's coming. It's a big matchup. And uh, what, a, what an exciting year it's been. Uh, for Cougs for, on the run, it's really something. I know it's going to be exciting to see. Um, also, uh, we have a big game, too. Uh, we're, we're traveling to Carolina, in case you guys weren't keeping track. Um, and, uh, it's a very familiar matchup. Somebody told me we've been playing nine years in a row or something like that against these guys. So uh, it's almost like a division matchup for us and for them, too. Um, so we're looking forward uh, you know, to getting revved up and, and getting it going. Um, it's an exciting matchup. Uh, we know these guys pretty well. They know us pretty well. So uh, it should be a, you know, like a... Good battle for us. Seahawks are at Carolina Sunday morning, 10 o'clock on Fox. Seattle is still in the hunt for a wild card playoff spot. You never know. They're 5-5. Five and five. Panthers are 6-4, and four, trailing Nolens in the NFC South. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Wednesday morning, 23 minutes after the hour. It's time for the obscure holiday of the day today. Hello. It's hello day today. It's world hello day today. The idea is to promote world peace the theme is greet 10 people for peace. So the idea today is, is just say hello to 10 people. It can be people that you know. It could be total strangers. It doesn't really matter. This date goes back to 1973 when Egypt and Israel were still doing that. And a couple of guys said, hey, we can promote world peace, but just by saying hello to people. So go out in the streets today and just randomly say hello to at least 10 people because it's World Hello Day. Hello. 24 minutes after the hour today in history. Happy birthday, North Carolina. That's the North Carolina state flag. It was on this date, November 21st, 1789. 229 years ago, the North Carolina ratified the United States Constitution. It became the 12th state of the Union. They, of course, are known as the Tar Heel State. And the state carnivorous plant is the Venus flytrap. Yes, the Venus flytrap is native to North Carolina. I have a lot of fun facts about North Carolina uh, but we don't have time for it, so look it up for yourself. Uh, happy birthday, North Carolina. Today is the 141st birthday of the record, baby. I love my records. Thomas Edison announcing on November 21st, 1877, that he invented the phonograph, a machine that can record 
and play sounds. Now, other inventors have produced devices that could record sounds. They could record sounds before this, but they couldn't play them back. Which, you know, what's the purpose of that? Uh, Edison's phonograph was the first to actually record the sound and then be able to reproduce the sound that was recorded. There's Thomas Edison uh, and his phonograph from 1877. The record, in a way, is 141 years old today. Speaking of records, November 21st, 1955. There's the contract. RCA purchases Elvis Presley's contract from Sam Phillips and Sun Records. The price was 35 thousand dollars. Sam Phillips always said, if he could find somebody, a white guy who could sing like an African-American, I'd make a million dollars. Well, he didn't make a million dollars. He made thirty-five thousand dollars. But he took that thirty-five thousand dollars and he invested it in a brand new business in Memphis, Tennessee called the Holiday Inn. So the payoff was about the same. Elvis Presley became the property of RCA November 21st, 1955. And today is the 54th birthday of the opening of one of the most incredible bridges in this country. At the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you see Staten Island, and the upper left-hand corner is Brooklyn, connecting the two. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which opened to traffic 54 years ago today, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world for a very, very long time. Now, because of the bridge's location, which is directly into New York Harbor, any cruise ship, any container ship that wants to dock in the port of New York City or the port of New Jersey has to be able to fit underneath the bridge. And for a couple of cruise ships, it's pretty close. It's pretty tight when the Queen Mary has to go underneath that bridge. It's, uh, she clears uh, underneath it by about a foot. It's all she's got. Um, and because of thermal extension of the steel cables, believe it or not, in the summertime, the bridge is 12 feet lower than in the wintertime. It's a big bridge, and it's a beautiful one as well. It opened on this date 54 years ago today. And finally, at 26 minutes after the hour, we've got some birthdays for you. How about Voltaire? This guy's a pretty good writer. He, he did a good job. The guy lived for 83 years, which is amazing considering he was born in 1694. Uh, he, he wrote almost everything possible in every literary form that you can think of. He wrote plays. He wrote, he wrote poems. He wrote novels. He wrote essays. He wrote articles. He wrote historical works. He wrote scientific works. It's all very readable. He wrote over 20,000 letters and more than 2,000 books and pamphlets. The guy was prolific with the pen, the most, best part of it, he was pretty good too. Voltaire, born in the state in 1694. The great Coleman Hawkins, one of my favorite saxophone players of all time. Love this guy. God, this guy could blow. He could blow a saxophone as good as anybody. He was born in the state in 1904, lived, uh, lived to the age of 64, passed away in 1969. Anything that Coleman Hawkins played is worth listening to. How about Stan the Man Musial? He was born in the state 98 years ago, base, baseball player, Hall of Famer, of course. Uh, class of 1969, for he was a three-time nationally most valuable player. He won three world championships with the Cardinals. And my favorite fun fact about Stan the Man Musial, when he retired, he had 3,630 hits, 3,630 hits, 1,815 at home, 1,815 on the road. That's pretty cool, Stan Musial. And a couple of living legends, the good doctor, Dr. John McRemanac. The doctor's in the house at 78 years old. The great New Orleans American singer, songwriter, and pianist. Everything that the great doctor does is good. And that guy can play piano as good as Coleman Hawkins could play the saxophone. The good doctor, Dr. John, is 78 years old today. And Ken Griffey Jr., he's 49. I couldn't believe that when that crossed my desk. Ken Griffey Jr. is 49 years old today. Of course, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame two years ago with 99.32% of the vote. Highest percentage ever in the history of the Hall of Fame. Happy birthday, Junior. 28 minutes after the hour. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, everybody is entitled to Mike Minotti's opinion. And the conversation I had earlier last week with Jose Oglesby and Joel Norman. Jose is the owner of the Wenatchee Apple Sox, and Joel Norman runs the day-to-day -day media relations. He's also the play-by-play -play guy. Let's talk baseball, Apple Cup Week, shall we? Apple Sox baseball on the, on the docket. When we come back, you're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Some people put everything into their work. They put their name on the door and their heart in the community. Some people make their lives work to carry on traditions that cross over the decades. When you shop these local businesses, you support all the things that make our community great and the money you spend stays here in the Valley. We give thanks to our sponsors who support this message. Collins Fashions in downtown Wenatchee, the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center and Clark's Jewelry on Palouse. 
This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Local Tell. Thanksgiving Day is the Foul Play 5K in downtown Leavenworth. Gather at the gazebo at 8.30 a.m. and the run starts at 9. Also happening in Leavenworth is Chris Kindle Market, a Bavarian-style Christmas market that includes entertainment, crafts, a lantern parade, Santa Claus, and more. It's happening this Friday through Sunday. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita mocha with whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the mocha Frappita. Peach Red Bull. It's a hometown celebration. Christmas in Kashmir, Saturday, December 1st, from noon to 3. It's family fun with a kids' craft station, festive music, complimentary warm beverages, and tasty holiday treats. Come enjoy the sights and sounds of the season while awaiting the arrival of Santa Claus. This message brought to you in part by... The Kashmir Chamber of Commerce mission is to promote and support new and existing businesses. Liberty Orchards, home to applets and cotlets. They make great gifts for the holiday. Stop by for a tour. Hey folks, Carrie from Blueberry Hills. A chill is in the air and it's a perfect time for some old fashioned comfort food like our amazing Eggs Benedict, chicken fried steak, French dips, soups made from scratch, or fruit pies fresh from the oven. The crowds might be gone, but we're still here for you folks. So bring an appetite and a friend to Blueberry Hills in Manson, where you pick, you sit, you eat, and you visit. Open Wednesday through Sunday from eight to three, wildaboutberries.com. Ho, ho, ho! Santa wants you to shop at the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. They have a huge variety of fun Christmas items in their Christmas cottage. There's so much to choose from, and it changes day to day. Santas and snowmen, holiday dishes and decor, village pieces and ornaments. To add to your collection or start something new, you can't beat the prices. What's old is new again for you in the Christmas cottage at the Wenatchee Valley Senior Activity Center. NCW Life Channel is proud to present the Spotlight on Business. We're going behind the scenes to bring you the story of local businesses throughout North Central Washington. How did they get started and why are they so successful? We'll answer these and other questions each week with Spotlight on Business, Sundays through Fridays on the NCW Life Channel. Mad Dog Magnati and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now I had two brothers, one older and one younger, and we always shared a bedroom. Um, and we made a mess, yes we did, and I, I, I believe me. And my mom, she was pretty strict about us cleaning up. Well, she tried to be anyway. She'd yell at us and she'd storm around with this butt paddle that she called the persuader. And sometimes she'd use it, yeah, okay. But once she got so fed up with us three guys that she said she was gonna clean up our room, but she was gonna charge us to do so. So one day she cleaned up the room and she left us with a note that said, boys, I cleaned up your room and I charged you five cents an item. Now remember, this was back in the early 60s. She said, you boys owe me 85 cents. So we left her a dollar and said, hey, keep the change, mom. Keep up the good work. <laughs> oh, not a smart move on our parts. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Rosemary, I've been at this job for a whole week and I haven't got a promotion yet. You should have someone around to help you think things through. Maybe I should. I'm always available. Oh, you're sure great. I hope I can show my appreciation. And... Lunch! Huh? I said lunch. What about lunch? I'd love to. Love to what? You said what about lunch. Gee, I thought you'd never ask. I didn't mean what about lunch. I meant what about lunch. Or dinner and a show. What show? Wenatchee High School's How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Buy, Buy your, your tickets, tickets today. today. 
This is the NCW Life Community Calendar brought to you by Local Tell. Pipus Public Market is turning on their holiday Christmas tree lights this Friday at 5.45 p.m. sharp. Watch the concourse be instantly turned into a festive holiday spectacle. The Wenatchee Public Library will be hosting a spelling bee for adults this Saturday from 7 to 9.30 p.m. Register online for this free event. For more information and other community events, visit ncwlife.com. Hey everyone, did you know that the NCW Life Channel is North Central Washington's go-to source for news? No matter how you prefer to view your news, NCW Life has you covered. Watch the evening news weeknights on TV, stream it, read it at ncwlife.com, or catch the latest news by following us on Facebook. Stay informed with local news, sports, weather, and shows featuring local people and events. NCW Life, a reflection and a spotlight of the communities we call home. It's estimated that one-third of Americans do not have a financial plan. At DA Davidson, their advisors are working to change that because they understand the importance of planning for the future. At DA Davidson, they believe in partnering together to build a strategy tailored to your needs. They spend the time and have the knowledge to help keep your financial future on track. Let DA Davidson Financial Advisors of Wenatchee put the strength of advice to work for you. You don't want to see this happen. It's the oil light on your car. Oil is the lube of life for your car's engine. At Alignment Pros and Express Lube, they pour the best oil your car deserves. Expect fast, friendly, superior service in a clean environment. They'll change your oil and perform a 21-point inspection while you enjoy the comfort of their amazing waiting room. Keep your car in top shape at Alignment Pros and Express Lube in East Wenatchee. Welcome back to Wake Up in Angie Valley. I am Dan Coons. It's cold, it's gray, it's clammy, it's November. Let's talk baseball, baby. <laughs> Hot stove league. Let's get going. The Wenatchee Apple Sox are about ready to enter into a milestone season, their 20th year of baseball in the West Coast League. And here to join me for the first time ever, and I can't believe it took us this long to get these guys on the show. To my immediate left is the broadcasting voice of the Wenatchee Wild. He also handles media relations and all kinds of, probably a, you have your finger in a lot of different pies, I'm assuming. Joel Norman, the director of communications, make your title specific, and the, and the owner of the Apple Sox, now in his second year, Jose Oglesby. Did I pronounce your last That's name correctly? Very Jose. good, thank you. Welcome to the program. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Uh, first timers get the same question, little, just a little uh, background, little Jose 101. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself, Jose. Well, um, I, I'm a software developer by career. Uh, and about a year and a half ago, I decided that I wanted to try owning a baseball team. And so I started looking around and I found the uh, Wenatchee Apple Sox and here I am. And here you are. And so far it's been a pretty good marriage. I, and so far, I've, I've, it's been great. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the people, the town, the community is supportive. Uh, it couldn't be, I couldn't have asked for a better setup. Were you familiar with Wenatchee area in North Central Washington before you, you dove in and wrote the Just check Just from driving through on the way to various places. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're here. And now I'm here. Yeah. Joel, a little bit about yourself. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Graduated from West Virginia University in okay. May and uh, moved out a week later. Packed up all my belongings and here I am. So. How did you land this gig? Oh. You saw it on the trades or something? Or? Yeah, I applied for about 20 to 30 different broadcasting uh -huh. jobs and, you know, fortunately I heard back from the Apple Sox. I, I remember I always tell people my first day I came in, I met Jose and I was like, well, I don't remember talking with him during the interview process. <laughs> and Ken Osborne, our GM, says, oh, this is Jose. He's the new owner of the team. My first thought was, Okay, well, do I still have a job? <laughs> do yeah, I need really? to turn around right yeah. now? Or? <laughs> but everything's worked out great. It's been a lot of fun. Let's, uh, let's take care of some myths and misconceptions right now. It's not like you guys fold up the tent at the end of August and say, we'll see you, see you in June. You guys work as hard now as you do during the actual baseball season, right, Jose? If anything, we work at it harder now. Uh, this is the season where we, you know, we have to make plans. We have to put things in, in place for next year. It takes time to get those things done. Uh, we talk to sponsors, we talk to season ticket holders. Uh, it's a lot of work now. Uh, same deal for you. What have you been doing since the season ended? Yeah, sponsorship sales has been right. a big thing. We talk with our sponsors. You know, they're a huge part of our success. Without them, you know, we're not here. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why we're going into our 20th season, and it's because of them. So ensuring that those relationships are still strong and maybe establishing some new ones. That's been a lot of the work this off season, and it's been a lot of fun so far. It should be noted that this is a stable franchise and that, you know, throughout the history of bef even before the West Coast League, there were other leagues that the Apple Sox were part of. Teams have moved, teams have folded. 
not the Apple Sox. They've been here since since day one. And that uh, it, it's good to work for a stable organization, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been a, it's a really comforting, I and mean, just for myself, you come in and you you look at these summer league teams. A lot of them fold across mm -hmm. time, but you know, I looked at the success of the Apple Sox, just not just on the field, but as a brand, as a franchise. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Jim's his real business philosophy was been real successful. You know, and then he sold the team, and we see it's going to continue now. And Ken staying along, it's just been a huge part of it, and it's exciting. It's an exciting team to work for, and you know, there's never a, a slow day at work, so to say. I know Jim Corcoran helped you out during that transition, Jose, last year. Now he's, he's gone. The training wheels are, are off the bike, so to speak. What did you learn from Jim last um, year? I think the, the most important thing that I learned from Jim was the importance of relationships. Uh, he had built, you know, hundreds of relationships with, with people in town, and he was able to, you know, uh, pass them on to, to, our, to our new uh, group. So that's, that's been really gratifying. And I think all this work that he did all those years, building those roots, is really coming to fruition. So that's really been helpful. When I was looking around for a, um, for a franchise, I really wanted a place where I didn't have to develop all those things from scratch yeah. because that's, that's really a daunting task. And you and also so, have Ken Osborne, who's, the, uh, who's part of the ownership group, and also he got a promotion. Yes. He's now the GM. Well, he's, he's the one that knows the most about what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> the, re the rest of us are you know, trying to catch up with, with, with Ken. But he's a great mentor uh, on that aspect of operations and things like that. And it, it helps that he loves baseball. And I know you love baseball. That's, it's, it's, you want to have an owner who loves the sport, right? It's not just looking at the bottom line on a spreadsheet. That's right. No, I, I, I'm a baseball fan through, through and through. I mean, I've been a baseball fan since I was uh, a kid, I mean, mm -hmm. really. Um, from Pittsburgh to West Virginia to Wenatchee, what are your impressions of our little hamlet here, Joel? Well, it's a nice little area. It's yeah. a little different, you know, I, I've been saying this since May. I mean, it's different seeing the mountains every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it was definitely hilly where I live, but not to this extent, living in a valley. It's, it's a beautiful area, though. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, the cold right now, maybe not as much, yeah, but, you know, thinking about June a little bit more and more each day. But well, we earn our springs and summers here absolutely. when we have to go through days absolutely. like this. The league schedule for next year is out, um, and uh, Jose, I'll ask you, how does, how does the league go about deciding who plays when and, and where? I know you have some non-league games. you got some holes to fill, but the league schedule is out. Walk us through the process. How does that work? So um, this year uh, we had our commissioner of the league, Rob Nair, uh, put together a proposal, which he then submitted to all the various teams. Uh, originally, we really wanted to have no gaps and, and have games like just about every day. Uh, but, you know, then reality sets in and you have, some teams cannot play on certain days. Some teams can, you know, have some travel restraints. Uh, and so eventually you have to, like, uh, go through all of that and, mm -hmm. and, and adjust the schedule for those things. And, and including everybody wants to play on Friday and Saturday at home. That's Every, right. Everybody wants to have Independence Day at home. And it, it doesn't always work out that way. That's right. This year we're going to have more. Last year we only had like three weekends, uh, I, I, I think. think it's two or so. Yeah. I, I think this year we're going to have four or five. And then I think we're also going to have one weekend where we have a, a non-league game. So. Okay. The season's still the same length, though. Everybody still plays uh, the same amount of league games. And it, we're still, the same we're still 60 games. 30, okay. 30-30. Yeah, 30, 30, 30 okay. home, 30 away. And uh, no, we, we are excited about uh, filling in the, the non-league uh, aspect of the schedule. Um, and it should, be, it should be fun. And this probably can't be too much of a phone call. As we mentioned, 19 years in the business, you can probably call up some of these teams and they go, oh, yeah, we, we love Wenatchee. We've been to Wenatchee. We'd be more than happy to play a couple of games that don't count with you guys. Sure. Sure. Yeah. We, 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 can do, we can do that. And, yeah. And, yeah, we're definitely looking, looking, making all those calls now. And I when think, is I that? Think, I think Ken's doing that. Is and Kyle yeah, did yeah. a little bit yeah. too. Yeah, he's yeah, made yeah. a couple calls. I think yeah. he scheduled a couple. Yeah, games yeah, we have yeah. In mind. yeah. yeah he, he told me this morning that he said that the schedule is almost set. Mm -hmm. We're Just almost about. there. And Just I like it when these out-of-town teams come because they never, Wenatchee never travels to take on these teams in these non-league games. They're almost always mm -hmm. at Paul yeah. Thomas Senior yeah. Field. Uh, but these are these are baseball lifers. These, these, these non-league teams that come in, these guys are just playing it just because they love baseball, mm -hmm. as yeah. opposed to collegiate guys who are playing in a wood bat lead and, and want to eventually work their mm -hmm. way up to wherever their talent 
and their gumption may take them. That's not necessarily the case with some of these other teams that come in. Some of the teams are in other leagues. We right. have some from the former league that we used to be in, the Pacific mm -hmm. International League. I think um, was it the Highline Bears. We played them this past yep. year. Northwest they, Honkers. Um, I mean, those then, are teams then we do from the, there. Then we do the academies. Yeah, okay. there's younger players coming mm -hmm. in too. It's you know, it's different leagues. It's nice to get these games, I know, because anytime you can add extra home games, why not? Yeah, right? oh, absolutely. <laughs> if you've got an open weekend, if you've got an open Monday or Tuesday, why not toss them in? So. Speaking of home games, um, any anything new? in the world of promotions or anything different that people can expect or is it going to be a little bit of a, what we've always used to and maybe some new stuff here and there? Well, um, one thing that I would like to do uh -huh. is um, increase the number of community events that we do. Okay. So you can look forward to seeing some community events held at, uh, you know, at our field. Uh, maybe we'll see if we can get some entertainment that's you know, different mm -hmm. from what we've done. I mean, I know, I know. You know, the thing about about the Apple Sox is over 20 years they've done everything. Really, yeah. They've had they've had concerts. I, did they? They here they had Willie Nelson. They had, we had Willie Nelson came to town okay. a number of years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I heard, so. I heard before that. our time. Here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, before before our time. But you know, I know, I'm not saying we're gonna get <laughs> Willie Nelson back. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? But, but you know, we, we'll, we'll we'll look into things like that. You mm -hmm. know, some some rev up the. The, and, the, and the reality fans. is, I mean, I'm a baseball fan, and I'll go to watch a baseball game, but they had no between any promotions. It doesn't bother me. I'm there to watch the game. But in today's day and age, it's a show. You have to put on a show for the fans. Absolutely. Well, the, the, the thing that's happening in baseball throughout, which baseball industry is very much worried about, is the attention span. Absolutely. Right? The attention spans are, are getting shorter. Uh, people don't really don't, don't want to sit through, uh, you know, I happily sat through 17 inning game at the Old Kingdom, okay? So, <laughs> but, uh, but these days, you know, p people wanted to, to, the game to move a little more. And so you've got to keep it entertained. You have to keep it interested. I'm sorry, Jose, I wasn't paying attention. What did you just say? I'm kidding. That's, that's, that's a joke. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite? You, 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 I know you're just in your first year. You're about ready to enter your second year. Uh, Joel, on the road, some of your favorite parks to call oh games boy. at? There was a lot of great ones there. Yeah. I really liked um, well, Victoria. We opened up the season. I mean, that just set a great tone mm -hmm. for the year. I remember I sat there and second game of the year had the highest crowd, in, highest attendance in any single West Coast League game in history. So that was really cool. It got me excited for the sure. start of the season. Oh, yeah. But that was a great place. I really liked um, you know, Corvallis was great because they played at Oregon State mm -hmm. Stadium. So. Uh, you know, some people wonder whether or not that's fair, but hey, that's a good relationship they build <laughs> sure. up over time. So and they're good, absolutely. Yeah, they're good. three straight championships. Yeah. So I like that one a lot, Victoria. It's probably other ones I'm thinking of. I'm excited to see some of the other ones still. You know, there's mm -hmm. some places, Ridgefield, they got a new team new this team. year. Yep. Um, no, we're not going there this year, but looking forward to next season going there. So a couple of neat places. Uh, Kyle, Kyle Crustangle is the manager, the head coach, if you will, of the, of the Natchez Apple Sox. Season was over. I'm sure you had a, a, an end of the year meeting with Kyle, sat down. I like him. I love his enthusiasm. I love his, his love of baseball. What was your parting instructions to Kyle before winter came? You know, let's, let's build a winner. Yeah. You know, let's let's figure out what kind of players we want this year, and targeting on those things. Uh, we didn't go in depth over you know like analysis of everything. Sure. But it's just mostly a philosophy. Uh, our philosophy is you know, uh, oh, my other philosophy is you know, hey, please, Kyle, get as many local kids as we can. Sure. <laughs> and when Etchie is a great baseball community, and you've had some great local kids right, we have. come up from, from, the, from the greater Wenatchee area to play for the Apple Sox. Yeah. And that's always a challenge, especially, and you can address this, Joel, mm -hmm. earlier in the year, a lot of these kids were playing college baseball Absolutely. deep into June, and, and the, the roster is really in flux for the first couple of weeks, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I felt bad sometimes. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if I was providing enough information for local media, but I was saying, boy, the roster is changing every day. We're picking mm -hmm. up guys on the road, literally halfway to a city, right. and then they're coming for two games and then they go back home so it is it's tough because the NCAA regionals are going on at that time and you move into the College World Series guys are kind of in and out you know some can come on some can't for a little right and, well, you know Kyle had did a great job of being able to just pluck guys from his, his school at Yakima Valley just pluck mm -hmm. them for a couple games if need be but yeah it really didn't stabilize until probably late June I remember we finally started having some home games in a row then and I was like all right here we go we got a stable team Got a good feeling what it's going to be like. So well, I, I know I'm watching the game sometime, uh, and I'm going like, wait, who's wait, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Wearing our jersey, so he's one of us. He's not on our roster. <laughs> Who is this guy? Yeah. That's our guy. <laughs> it's not just quality baseball players; it's quality baseball people. That's what you want, Jose. Right? You want uh, outstanding young citizens. Absolutely. I mean, this we are trying to prepare uh, these kids for you know the beyond. You know mm -hmm. what happens beyond and. 
I think character counts. Mm -hmm. so. And you want them to, t to, wherever they go in their life, to have fond memories of their time with the Apple Sox. Is it too early to talk about billet families? Can we throw that out there? How are we doing for billets? The, you know, the, for the, the players for a, play, a bed to stay, sleep uh, we in? We have a great, great uh, program. Uh, and, you know, we have, our host families are fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. they're ready to, to go. We, I don't know, do, do we know who we are losing this year? I don't think we know if anybody is not coming back. But, you know, I think we have a good, a good mm -hmm. bench of people who want to c come in. And so, you know, it's, I, yeah, it's, I think we're doing, we're doing really well with our, with our uh, host families. They mean so much to us, too. Oh, sure. We talk about what the sponsors mean, but you think about the unselfishness of these mm -hmm. host families, you know, to take up a kid who they don't know at all. I mean, I speak from experience. I, I stayed with a host family this past summer. Mm -hmm. It meant the world for someone who's going to a completely new area just to have someone say, here's some food, here's right. a bed, you know, and I know the players really appreciate it, too. Yeah. I'm excited for Apple Sox baseball. 20th anniversary. Special logo, special jerseys, that kind of cool stuff, Jose, or... We we're, 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 we're definitely unveiling a logo. Okay. That's, that's for sure that we'll be uh, having uh, throughout, throughout yeah. the season. It'll be coming up. Uh, we are definitely going to have, you know, some special publications and things like that and, mm -hmm. and media outreach and, and, mm -hmm. and things like that. We, we might do, you might have to do a, a history of the Apple Sox special. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. How are they, as, as new, as somebody new to the league, Jose, how do the other owners uh, bring you on board? I know it's kind of a closed group. I mean, to own a... To own a baseball team in the West Coast League is, is uh, not an easy gig to get. <laughs> well, there, there, there again, uh, Jim Corcoran. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know whether I should praise him or. <laughs> but I, I go to this meeting and they said, "Well, Jim ought to do that. <laughs> Jim, Jim used to do that." Now you're doing it, th uh -huh. this being league secretary. Sure. And I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. And, and so I'm dealing with insurance for the league no, and I'm sure. dealing with all sorts of things like that. So they're happy so far to have me, I think. And it's pure baseball. I love the wood bat. I just love yeah. that. And it, it is, there's something about the sound of a ball hitting a wood bat as opposed to an aluminum bat. That drives me just, you know, it's got to be a wood bat deal. Aluminum's cheating, I said. Yeah, <laughs> it is cheating. cheating. It is cheating, if you ask me. I just assume get rid of the whole darn thing. Absolutely. Uh, let's wrap up where we started. Schedule. The, the, as, as we mentioned before, the, the league schedule is set. They still have to fill in some holes for the non-league. Circle some important dates for us. Opening night is? June 4th. That's against. That's a big one. That's going to be against, oh, I forget already. Victoria. Victoria, Victoria. that's right. Okay. Victoria again for the fourth year in a row. That's right. Okay. We played them a lot in recent years. That's home. That's going to be great to start at home. Uh, July 3rd, fireworks night. Mm -hmm. got to love those. I mean, that's, that's always a lot of fun. And then beyond that, I'm trying to think of some other really good ones. It's just the whole schedule really excited me. We've got yeah. a lot of weekend dates. We'll have a lot of fun promotions, we hope. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see yeah. what, what we do with those. Um, What's one that, that that's always good? Uh, yeah, I'm blanking out on that. We closed the year in Corvallis, so that could be interesting. That could if be we interesting. Are, yeah, if yeah. we're in a playoff race, that could be uh -huh. big for seeding or potentially sure. something else, maybe a potential championship preview. We and, it, you know, it went right down to the last couple of couple of days it's last dead, year. Yeah. In fact, it was so convoluted, we couldn't figure out who was going to make the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll have somebody in the league office address that uh, issue right we, there. We, we, we're going we're gonna to avoid that. Last year, there was, you know, some confusion as to uh -huh. the, the communication of what the tie-breaking procedures were and things mm -hmm. like that. This year, we're going to avoid that for sure. <laughs> That's what we want to hear. Make sure, make sure uh, can I get happen. season tickets now? Can I do it? Is it available? Are <laughs> yeah, they season Brazilian? tickets are still available. Okay, absolutely. Uh, yes, no, we, we definitely want everybody to come. Uh, we're also looking for new sponsors. Uh -huh. Always. Great sponsor opportunities. Yeah. Um, and we'll have a couple of interesting uh, twists to throw at that. Yeah. So. And the, the improvements that they made to Paul Thomas Senior Stadium on the campus of Wenatchee Valley College, really nice. I really like No more... The, yeah. the pavement, it's a beautiful facility. It's one of the best in the league. We and uh, it's a great place to watch a ball game. We'd love to work on a new scoreboard. Yeah, that, that'd be, that, would that. Yeah. that would be next. That would be next One thing sure. at a time. But yeah, it's a great one facility. You know, yeah. We're grateful to the college working with us for that over the last few years. I mean, mm -hmm. it's been a nice partnership and we really enjoyed it. You know, it's a, I think it's one of the best views in the West Coast League. Yeah. I love my view in the press box. You can see the mountains, you see everything, especially when the sun's setting. Sure. It's just beautiful. Well, I, I, PA, I, I did PA work for the Apple Sox for a number of years and it was, it's a cool, it's a cool organization to work for, and there's nothing better on a summer night to sit in the sit in the ballpark and watch these kids ply their trade and say, "Hey, I remember when that guy played for the Apple Sox, yeah. and I was pitching for the Mariners, stuff like that." Marco so, Gonzalez. Marco Gonzalez. <laughs> uh, don't be a stranger. Come back and see me soon. All right. We will. We will. All right. Go Apple Sox.
getting ready for baseball can't come soon enough. Did I tell you about that pitch I invented about the slow? <laughs> you did. I still got. Will they take a fifty-four-year-old guy with a bad arm? Hey. You know, you get a chance. Yeah. We, you you can come and, and, and try and uh, strike out our players. <laughs> 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 Maybe that'll be oh. the next promotion. There you go. <laughs> we guarantee you, I will not be a member of the Apple Sox pitching staff next year because I just I just don't have it anymore. I just don't. Mm. You watch. You wake up in Anchi Valley in the NCAA Life Channel. We'll be right back. It's a hometown celebration. Christmas in Kashmir, Saturday, December 1st, from noon to 3. It's family fun with a kids' craft station, festive music, complimentary warm beverages, and tasty holiday treats. Come enjoy the sights and sounds of the season while awaiting the arrival of Santa Claus. This message brought to you in part by... Kashmir Veterinary Clinic. Natural pet care in everything they do. Downtown Kashmir. Find Doan's Valley Pharmacy in the heart of downtown Kashmir. Discover great gifts, and they'll be happy to gift wrap for free. Hi everyone, Brent here at Town Nissan. Will you look at this 2016 Nissan Altima? Or this 2016 Nissan? Or better yet, how about a 2014 Nissan Sentra? All three with very low miles and all three certified through Nissan with up to a 100,000 mile warranty at no cost to you. Where you can save thousands by buying a pre-owned Nissan. Come down today, see us at Town Nissan behind Costco in East Wenatchee. Some people put everything into their work. They put their name on the door and their heart into the community. Some people make it their lives work to carry on traditions that cross over the decades. When you shop these local businesses, you support all the things that make our community great and the money you spend stays here in the Valley. We give thanks to the sponsors who support this message. Chris Kringle in Leavenworth, Praise Fruit Barn on Highway 2 and Liberty Orchards in Kashmir. Hey everyone, Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. In the investment world, ROI stands for Return on Investment. Well, how does better health, better wealth, and better relationships sound for ROI? Join us every week right here on NCW Life and learn how to invest in the most important asset, you. We're gonna answer your questions and provide some weekly inspiration so you can create a life that you love. Join us on Live It Up. Rosemary, I've been at this job for a whole week and I haven't got a promotion yet. You should have someone around to help you think things through. Maybe I should. I'm always available. Oh, you're sure great. I hope I can show my appreciation. Lunch! Huh? I said lunch. What about lunch? I'd love to. Love to what? You said what about lunch. Gee, I thought you'd never ask. I didn't mean what about lunch. I meant what about lunch. Or dinner and a show. What show? Wenatchee High School's How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Buy, Buy your, your tickets, tickets today. today. And we're back here live from Studio 7 in downtown Wenatchee on the NCAA Live Channel. Wake up Wenatchee Valley. I'm Dan Koontz, your host. About three minutes to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at that all-important Thanksgiving holiday forecast from the National Weather Service. As you see it on your screen, I'm going to give you a couple of reminders. The air stagnation advisory remains in effect until 1 o'clock this afternoon. And it looks like they're going to go ahead and let that baby go away because we're done with that really quiet, benign weather we've had the last couple of days as that high-pressure ridge is now starting to move out of the area. And we have a series of upper-level disturbances who are going to come pay us a visit. So the air stagnation advisory is going to be gone, Johnson, it looks like, uh, at 1 o'clock this afternoon. However, the Stage 1 burn ban is still in effect. That's from the Department of Ecology. So all outdoor burning is prohibited. That includes residential, agricultural, forest burning, whatever the case may be and uncertified wood stoves and fireplaces and all that stuff prohibited unless, of course, it's your only source of heat for your home. Your forecast is a 30% chance of light rain mainly this afternoon. Otherwise, just quite a bit of cloud cover high today of about 39. Slight chance of rain tonight, mostly cloudy, 32 for the overnight and low. A couple of days ago, we were thinking we could get some snow Thanksgiving night into Friday. Yeah, not looking like it. 50% chance of rain. Uh, Thanksgiving Day, lots of clouds, high of 42. Not going to get a lot of rain if we get any at all. Late Thursday night, a continuing chance of rain. Overnight low of about 32, 33, right around there. Now that would usually, with freezing and precipitation, mean snow. We have a, just the slightest chance of some really light snow before 8 o'clock on Friday. And then rain and whatever snow we get is going to be long gone because we're going to top off at about 40 on uh, Black Friday. Uh, partly cloudy Friday night, 29 for the overnight low. We have a little break in the weather Saturday with a high near 41 and then mostly cloudy and a high near 40 on 
Sunday. Finally, let's take a quick look at your major mountain passes. Uh, of course, if you're going to drive over the mountain passes, ladies and gentlemen, we always recommend that you use an automobile. No advisories, no restrictions on any of the major mountain passes. The snow level is going to be right about 4,000 feet beginning today and right through the weekend. So when we talk about light rain in the Wenatchee Valley, we're talking about snow in the Cascades. This is just for Stevens. I-90 right now with a lower elevation of about 1,000 feet lower than Stevens. They're not expecting any kind of significant snow at all on I-90. Uh, but Stevens is going to get some snow. A couple of inches today, a couple of inches tonight, a couple of inches on Thanksgiving Day. And on Thanksgiving evening, they're going to have about 4 to 8 inches of snow. Again, on Stevens Pass, not nearly that much snow is expected on either Blewett or on I-90, and don't forget, it's a busy travel day today, so get ready to sit in traffic, <laughs> if that's the case. No show tomorrow. It's Thanksgiving. No show tomorrow. Eric Grantstrom will be filling in for me on Friday. I got myself a four-day weekend. I hope you do, too. Take care. Bye-bye.